How the heck are you everybody? I'm Fastidious. Welcome back to my channel. As you can see, we are not alone today. It is time for collaboration number three in our epic class by class tier list series. Fastidious. Fastidious. We are joined by the fantastic Veiled Shot Gaming. I'll let him introduce himself in a sec, but I just want to say, me and Veiled Shot first spoke about a collab two years ago when we were playing Awake in Chaos Era. Some of you probably don't even know that game exists. Uh, so welcome, Veiled Shot. It's so cool to finally have you. Yeah, it's uh, it's been pretty fun jumping into Watcher of Realms for uh, quite some time. I've been playing for about a month and a half so far. and. Uh, I definitely hopped over to your channel quite a few times. You know, I had to get the early game free to play progression down, even though I am not free to play in this game. Okay. <laughs> but uh, been enjoying it quite a bit. And oh man, mages are certainly one of my favorite classes. So I'm excited to dive into this. Absolutely. Uh, and when, when I gave uh, Veilshot the option, like I was like, we got three left, which you want to take? He was like, oh yeah, mages, for sure, mages. And we've got 16. This is the most populated class of heroes among all the epics. So without further ado, let's hop right in. You can see we got the tierless maker behind us. Let's turn that window off. Let's head into the gallery. I'll let you kick this one off, I think, with the free champion from day three. What do you got to say about our girl Mari? Ooh, so this is probably my most used mage, I would say. Uh, she is someone that uh, I was kind of wondering, okay, can she deal damage? She's, she's not there to deal damage, okay? <laughs> if that's what you're expecting, you're going to be disappointed. But one thing that I think is really underrated in this game is CC. Uh, like, you look at the numbers, and you're like, oh, she doesn't do damage. But oftentimes, the ability to just, like, control the enemies, and even more importantly, the vulnerability aspect is kind of disgusting it's one of the few debuffs that you're really looking for in a lot of your teams and she offers both versions of it physical and magical which mm -hmm. is exceptional in any team right basically covers every single sort of damage especially for like gear ride one you're looking at like if you're using maul right great vulnerability if you're using uh your standard mages like anna or if you happen to be lucky enough for comet great fantastic character does no damage but absolutely <laughs> absolutely amazing for uh the control and debuffs that she's bringing absolutely and she's a great way to kick this off guys because when you think mages you might be thinking like comet or virna or iona but there's like a, mages are interesting because like there are too few classes i think in this game we were chatting about this before because someone like mari you see mage and you see magic and you're like finally aoe magic damage no damage control debuff it says it right here that's what she's all about uh we're gonna head to the list in just one second we've got our big rubric as well we're gonna be thorough today uh but i just want to say guys there's an issue with crowd control in this game uh slow is the king slow is so overpowered freeze is really cool it's usually harder to manipulate stun is a huge issue it's super underpowered but slow especially at 75 percent which mari has in spades is it's nasty it's really 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 good um so let's head to this nice big rubric i've been working on the big reveal you can see we're pretty zoomed out today, guys, because we got 16 of these to get through. I'm going to go real quick. Uh, she's a northerner. She's a slow, uh, and she's free. Uh, she's a spammer. She just shoots those slows out left and right. She's tremendous in gear aid one, not just for those amazing vulnerabilities, the magic vulnerability especially, uh, which goes all the way up to 20% when you put skills into her, which I recommend you do. Uh, but the slows can help these enemies from getting to your wall. Gear aid two, she works. There's some nice strategies to help delay, particularly the boss from getting towards you. Uh, gear aid three, we gave her a B minus here. She's serviceable but she's going to drop off a cliff in the end of the game when you really need that piercing damage uh guild boss surprisingly we gave her a b specifically just because you can get 20 percent vulnerability for both physical and magic arena you guys are probably sick of her in the arena she's absolutely s tier uh she's so frustrating the way people can beat you with these these cheesy <laughs> cheesy comps uh campaign she's she's an s for a lot of reasons but just the fact that you get her on day three and then she's just going to be your crowd control for weeks and weeks maybe i mean you guys heard veil shot say he's, he's her most used uh most used mage faction wars of course for northerner that's great to have some cc void rift we see some usability but we're just going to give her a c overall we're giving her an a um i could probably hear an a plus or something so if you guys want to let me know let me know in the comments uh on to the next so lay uh what do we think about so lay let's head on back to the gallery <laughs> she is not the this greatest one's a tough one. 
We actually had a, we, had, we, we probably talked about her the most before we started this call because like on paper is she that bad i don't know but on paper could i ever imagine using her i also don't know um no talent available if we go to the skills she got basic magic damage there pretty standard then she's got this bounce we'll talk about that in a second on her ultimate but incinerate attack interval increases by 30 percent uh, while basic attack is permanently converted to two fireballs it's just kind of like she spams out these fireballs. Surprisingly, even with full awakening, she doesn't do any burning damage, where she seems to be like the most fire forward champion we have, or one of the most. Uh, back to this bounce, guys. This can be pretty frustrating because it, it will just stop if it can't bounce among other enemies. The only way to avoid that is to get her all the way to A5. So to really properly make her relevant and to allow uh, her to hit for multiple bounces, uh, it, it needs to be A5. She needs to go up to A5. So maybe you had her on the 10X and you got really lucky, or I don't even know if you'd call that lucky, or maybe you're crazy enough to invest soul stones. Uh, let's head back to the rubric. Anything you want to share here, Veiled? Oh, man. Uh, for those of you that uh, remember the two years ago, it's uh, Garel, but bad. Like, uh, this, uh, <laughs> she does look this like Garel. Is just, yeah. It is just... I, so... I, I was telling uh, Fastidious over here that I have the unfortunate option of using Zilla too. So any potential option that Soleil might have had is completely gutted. Really <laughs> just a kind of mediocre single target slash little bit of AOE kind of yeah. damn it. It's just, it's just not that good. I don't know. Like there's so many better options, even within like the mages, yeah. there's so many better options. Um, even within epic category, even, just even better. within her faction, I think we've got better magic single target mage options. So <laughs> I think let's get into the grades here. The issue with Soleil is really going to be she kind of wants to be a single target, but you can't unlock that properly until she's a five. That's a big investment. Uh, we went again. We gave her C plus for Gear Aid one. Could it work with the things bouncing around? It could. She does magic damage. Why not? Gear Aid two. I have seen her. Uh, Ronaldo sent me a clip of her doing work on stage twenty and twenty one to nuke down the boss. But that was a bit more of a mean team than anything. But the fact that it worked alone means we'll give her a C plus. Means she's usable. Gear A3, no way in heck. Uh, for guild boss, I mean, she is infernal. Uh, and if you uh, infernal teams are the strongest. So if you just need a third or fourth member, she could totally work. Uh, we gave her a B. Arena, I'll give it a D. Guys, a quick refresher. A dash means we think they're unusable. A D means that's the worst possible grade, but they're still usable. Uh, campaign. C, super mediocre. Faction, she has dual faction membership, so I figured let's give her a B. Void Rift, you'd have to be crazy. Uh, solid C. She feels like a solid C. Shall we talk about Navras, my friend? <laughs> so this is one, uh, from what I understand, the Scarecrow is your pet project. Kind of looks like uh, someone from Dragon Ball Z over here, but I mean, we got <laughs> kind of an interesting character, a little bit of AoE going on. I have not really dove into him so much. However, there's a few things that really appeal to me. Double faction membership, as you mentioned earlier, I actually super value that, like a really high amount, especially for you know lower spenders, free to play players. And then also just the amount of AOE damage that presumably this guy could put out with the multipliers we have here. Very, very interesting to me. And it's someone I'll have to take another look at, but uh, definitely your pet project, I, I, yeah. it sounds like. I really like him. Maybe he just gives me like this, it's funny you say Dragon Ball Z, he gives me like a Jack Skellington vibe with the smile, but oh my God, do I see that Super Saiyan hair. Um, yeah, I, I'm gonna be six starring him probably within the next week. Uh, one of the perks of now having the content creator diamonds, I don't have to worry about that. I've tested him a bit and I love what I see. Guys, we're getting, as of today, when the uh, update was announced, we're getting up to stage 12 in the faction trials. So they're gonna become more and more relevant. Pantheon is enormous for account progression. Do not sleep on it. Do not sleep on the faction trials. If you guys take a peek here, only him, Greed, and Hotsit. Those are the only platformers in the entire Nightmare Council. And then if we go to Esotericists, Esotericists just stink, especially when it comes to damage. So like he really shines in that respect. Let's pick him up over here. Uh, but yeah, he's kind of like a single target burst, similar to like what Soleil wants to be, what Amani is, what Azoth is. But then he has just a touch of AoE at the end of everything. I think that makes him just more relevant for, for all content. Uh, he's someone I'm really excited to try out. Let me know in the comments if you guys have tested him. Or even better, if you if you have him at different awakenings, I think that could be really cool. Uh, he's someone who I'm going to get in the test server and someone who I'm going to build on my own account. I really, really enjoy him. I think his kit re reads really cool, and I think he's got one of my favorite designs of the game. Uh, we'll break it down real quick here. 
Uh, so we've got him in A minus for gear raid one. I think those little bursts of AOE, if you build him with a lot of attack speed, he's got a decent attack control at 2.6 seconds. So you could easily get that down to like 1.5, 1.6. Uh, I could see a ton of little bursts going on. Uh, gear raid two, he could nuke down the boss. Uh, you also might need him as a fourth deploy for the nightmare faction. Remember, he has dual membership in the nightmare faction. I think that makes him relevant. Uh, gear raid three, I do not see that happening. Guild boss, uh, again, fourth deployment for the nightmare faction. The AOE will kind of go to the wayside, but nightmare is the most accessible, amazing faction in the game. A lot of people aren't going to have an infernal team. A lot of people will have a nightmare team. Uh, arena, could he work? Yes. Could he work well? I doubt it. <laughs> uh, campaign, I think it'd be fantastic. Uh, he's got a little bit of everything. I th you see, we wrote hybrid here. I think these hybrid with a bit of single target, bit of AO AOE, you know, someone like a Brienne, like a, maybe almost like a mage version. You guys know how much like I love Brienne. I think that's that's an amazing champion. Faction, honestly, I'm going to do it. We're going to give him S+, plus, I think, just because I think he's going to be a star in both the factions he's a member, member of. Mm -hmm. Boy, Boy Drift, he works. I mean, the fact that he's a hybrid damage dealer, I totally see, could see him working, not as your main DPS, but as a support DPS, like a second or third option, uh, even in hard Void Drift, I think totally he would work. Uh, on to who we have titled the Jack of No Trades, Master of None, Nazim. <laughs> Who, which one of us has the rare privilege to speak about Nazim right now? Okay, I'm going to have to dive into this one because this is someone I have built out. I had summoned like, I think it was like five copies of him. So I didn't get the Awakened 5, uh, but I did get the Awakened 4. So he is like pretty upgraded. And man, oh man, he is one of the more interesting characters in the game because, you know, he's got the ability to go ahead and get the healing out or your allies while also dealing damage. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, this could be really good, you know? We got some slow going on. We have a, maybe a little bit of stun, which is kind of mediocre, but I like the slow. <laughs> but he just does like nothing. He's, like, he's he trying to do too much. His heal is <laughs> trash. It's like, as you say, Jack of No Traits, I think is the perfect title because he is trying to do so many things if he had like really good damage the heal would be really interesting but it's just it's just yeah. not it's it's nothing yeah they just threw everything at the wall with him and i don't think anything any of it stuck i will i do want to point out before people let us up in the comments we know he's getting buffed but as of the time uh september the 28th he has not been buffed so until it is live on global he's a stinky stinky guy and we're gonna rate him as such so, Gear Raid 1, we're giving him a D. He does have magic damage, but he's a terrible option for it. Gear Raid 2, no way. Gear Raid 3, no way. Guild Boss, no way. Arena, you'd have to be crazy. Campaign, technically. Uh, we'll give him the D, though. <laughs> Faction, just because it's Esotericist and you might be lacking, uh, just people, you might need a warm body. We'll give him a nice C. That's the warm body rating. Void Rift, you'd have to be nuts. I'm giving him a D minus. This is a grade we have only reserved thus far for Brunor. So that lets you know how I feel about him. Uh, this is a nice moment for us to say, hey, let's start actually placing these guys on our tier list. Uh, Mari, we gave an A. Uh, Navros, we gave an A. We'll order these at the end, guys. That'll be the final thing we do. Uh, here's our guy, Nazim. Where do you want to go, Nazim? Oh, you want to stay in D? No problem with me. Uh, and then finally, we have got Soleil. So Leal, if you will, she can be a C. All right, moving right along. Ooh, actually, who gets the privilege of talking about one of my favorite champions in the whole game, Greed. Can I take this one or you want to grab it? Oh, take I, this is a favorite of mine, but yeah, go for it. I love it. We'll split it. I'll, I'll, I'll do. I'll get it going, and then and then you uh, you can be the closer. All right. I love greed, guys. If you're keeping up, in the nice moment to plug my epic drop rates project, guys. We have submissions. We have over three hundred twenty thousand summons accounted for, and let me tell you, this guy is insanely rare. Uh, you're gonna have to stay tuned for more. And if you haven't filled out that form, the link will be in the description and pinned to the top top comment on this video. Uh, but he's a dual faction member, so points with me and Veiled right away. Uh, I'll just talk about the basic and I'll let you talk about the rest because the basic is what I'm just freaking so excited about. We got AOE on the basic and sometimes the guys you see on the basics, it'll say like up to five targets. This is just AOE damage. This is actual area of effect. Uh, multiple enemies in range. It's blue because they're not telling us how many. My guess is probably like 10, whatever it is, super significant. The most important blah, 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 50% chance. Now we are flipping a coin. 
uh, of increasing the range. Okay, you can hit a little farther. Doesn't really matter when you're pointed inward, right, for gear aid one, but then there's also a 50% chance that the coin lands the right way of doing a minus 15% magic resistance, and that is crazy. This is an exceptionally rare debuff. It's super, super potent, and I do want to shout out, guys, uh, if you can get him and you do want to invest in him, and I would recommend investing in him. He doesn't have to be a top priority, but eventually you will want to get him A5, and then both of these effects, the increased range and the magic uh, resistance reduction will occur at the same time. So basically 100% uptime all the time, AOE on maybe the rarest debuff in the game. All right, I'll let you pick it up there, Veiled. <laughs> wow, you took it away right there. I love it. Uh, there's <laughs> a few things that I love even more so, uh, not necessarily more so, I shouldn't say that because the basic is just king, right? But we have a, such a powerful debuff in slow coming in on the ultimate, which is really, really powerful. Right, it is an or, but still ends up happening quite significantly and just straight up just a ton of AOE damage. Mm -hmm. But honestly, while the ultimate is quite good, I actually like the passive a lot, especially in things like Gear Raid 1, for example, where you just have a ton of creatures coming in. And if you're able to get three stacks of this, you know, you're potentially, if you have it upgraded, you're going to get a ton of additional attack up to 45%, mm -hmm. right? This is a massive buff considering attack is oftentimes viewed as one of the stronger stats in the game. Mm -hmm. And being able to add that, he actually does a good chunk of damage uh, that I found, as well as just, as you say, offering such a powerful, powerful diva. Very, very big fan. And just as a cherry on top, it's a dual faction. And uh, these are my favorites. So. And, he, and he has dual heads. <laughs> Um, I mean, how can you go wrong? How can you go wrong? Uh, I will say, guys, if you, you you can really just build him super high attack speed, get that interval nice and low. I'll show you right now. He's three and a half, but if you're willing to get that down, you could get that to like the 1.6 range. Uh, it takes a lot, but then all of a sudden, not only do you increase the chances of winning this coin flip and getting the magic res, but you can also increase the chances of just him being the one to get that final kill shot. Uh, and that is an amazing way to just because attack is king in this game and getting that extra 45%, all of a sudden he's gonna be doing that damage like an Iona, which is which is crazy. Um, all right, let's head right on back uh, to our rubric. So, uh, you wanna take these grades here? You wanna say what we gave? Ooh, I'll, I'll, yeah, let's go for it. S plus gear red one. I totally wish I had this guy. Please give him to me. <laughs> Such a powerful one. Probably would just take me straight up to uh, the later stages. I'm stuck on 18 right now, but uh, that's okay. <laughs> uh, gear Raid 2, Gear Raid 3, unusable, unfortunately. Uh, we have for Guild Boss C tier, there is like some viability with the magic, you mm -hmm. know, uh, but just just not that great, honestly. Uh, for Arena A tier, yeah, been a big, big, big fan of some of these AoE characters coming in. Uh, definitely in some situations, even as someone who has comments, I can sometimes get dominated by a greed. I'm not going to lie. Uh, campaign faction campaign s tier very very nice addition there faction s plus cannot understate the dual faction membership guys just just build out all the dual faction members you'll you'll complete yeah. all the factions by accident it's 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 that easy, <laughs> that easy. <laughs> yeah a minus for void rift yeah um i'm i'm definitely someone who's trying to push in void rift it's a pretty tough piece of content but uh, it's definitely going to help you out there so pretty big fan of greed definitely wish i had him yeah, we almost gave him an S, guys, so let us know if you think we were wrong. We settled at an A-plus there. However, uh, we will put him in the rubric right now. All right, so we're going to put it at the very <laughs> top of A. However, I'm very, I'd be very happy to hear arguments for him being uh, being S, because I, I totally get it. Uh, maybe, we're, maybe we're just jaded because we're not one of the lucky few that have actually pulled him. All right, headed right <laughs> back to our list. Um, up next is going to be Aeon. Do you have Aeon? I do, and actually she's someone I summoned very, very recently, Ooh, and I've been cool. a pretty big fan of her. Uh, let's just jump straight into the passive, I would yeah, say. Yeah, the most I important. Mean, yeah. that, is, that is where you gotta start. Uh, she just massively increases your damage, similar to kind of the reason why we like Greed a lot. Aeon also provides what a, some powerful debuffs in the game, and do not underestimate the amount of extra damage that you can get mm -hmm. from skilling her up. This goes from 12%, to 20% additional magic damage taken. Just if you consider how much damage, like and let's say you're running an A or a comment, and physical, right? You're just gonna be ramping up those damage. This can oftentimes account for millions of damage. Like mm -hmm. it is super powerful. And then you have to add on top of that, she is a Lord, right? Such a powerful option, right? As well, 
If you're running in with freeze effects, things like, you know, Maul, things like Mari, which is free, uh, you know, you're gonna be able to get value out of that. And then, I mean, we have the slow and the pullback from the ultimate. I mean, what does this character not do? She's just absolutely damage. insane. Lots of damage. No, 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 <laughs> right? she, she doesn't nope. do damage. No damage. <laughs> yeah, no damage. That's the only problem, really. Um, yeah, yeah, I think some people so. are uh, mistakenly really upset with Aeon because they build her as a DPS. Uh, but that's that's the only mistake you can make with her. If you can just go really high attack speed, you will. She's the only character that I know of in the game that will have a 100% uptime, 100% uptime on her vulnerabilities. Uh, that is nuts, 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 nuts. Um, and then just like Veiled said, this this uh, the cultist, excuse me, the cultist Lord bonus here. She's giving slows. You can throw that blue sea ice ring if you got that mythic artifact, just to give even more chances for slows. She's crazy good, crazy good. Um, let's hop right back into our sheet here. Uh, so we called her the debuff goddess. She's the Lord as well. And guys, when you ever see gold here, it's because those are Lord champions. We got three in this, three in this, uh, class of heroes, just like we had the three fighters as well. Um, so for gear raid one, we're giving her straight up S. Uh, she's putting out multi-target damage and constant uptime on those vulnerabilities. She's going to make life so much easier for your main DPS. Uh, gear raid two, we're giving her a B. You're not really going to use her at all, even for the debuffs, but just on the back of her being the lord for characters like Virna, Riona, that might be your AoE mage that wipe out those mobs. I think that alone gives her the B, uh, even though you may, she may, may never even have her feet touch the battlefield. Uh, <laughs> guild, <laughs> guild boss, we're giving, her, we're giving her the A here. I mean, just for those vulnerabilities, 100% uptime. She's the only one. It's super special. Uh, we're giving her S in Arena. Uh, she's viable. She's got good crowd control. She can do cheesy stuff with that. But even just for the Lord skill, she's buffing some of the best characters in the absolute game. Uh, campaign, S, obviously. Faction, every Lord will get an S+. Plus if, for Faction, obviously, they're the Lord. Giving her an A in Void Rift. Again, mostly on the back of just her Lord skill. The CC might come into play a bit. But our first S guys straight up s not that much more to say all right e oh let's place her first let's place her before i forget again uh oh my god these guys are hiding from me all right let's go to iona and you said you spent a little bit of money so i'm assuming you have her because i do not yeah so i decided to go ahead i was i was debating but at the end of the day i was tempted by anna and uh i was just like okay we're gonna dive into her and actually very recently as of like a week ago i was like okay Let's let's go ahead and start pushing some gear raids and overall just get some progression done on my account. And gear raid one was my current focus. I mentioned offhand I have Comet, right? And Comet, I think, is a really, really nice comparison to Anna because they're kind of doing very similar stuff, uh, which is just a ton of AoE damage, right? Now, there is actually something that I've been really valuing with Anna. Uh, and that is just the massive slows that can come in, mm -hmm. right? Very, very powerful to kind of stall out the opponents when they're coming. And just the amount of damage with the passive or the auto ability, I guess, the amount of extra attack speed that you can come in with, mm -hmm. stack a bunch of attack on her. This pairing is exceptional. And despite Comet having better gear on my account, she actually does like 80% of Comet's damage. and Comet's already just an absolute disgusting, you know, AOE mage and Anna's almost competing with him. And I still have so much value to get because she's one of those characters where I do not have the extra awakens on her and they're actually quite easy to get. So if you're able to get like specifically, you know, awaken uh, a three, you know, awaken five, awaken one, these types of things, super, super powerful, uh, just AOE damage and probably like if I think Gear Raid 1, I think Anna. Like, she's the first person I kind of think yeah. of, to be honest. Yeah, she, I mean, the vast majority of players will, she's the best value in the game. If you're going to spend any money, the five bucks to get her, I mean, you're, she's kind of a legendary in the skies. She's super, super powerful. Uh, so don't think I'll judge you if you drop those five bucks just because I didn't, because that's money well spent. Um, I just do want to highlight the Awaken 1 here, guys. During the ultimate, the attacks, any attack is going to trigger Starburst. Uh, you heard, uh, all that gushing from Veiled about Starbust and the slows. Super important, I would say, if you want to use her, guys, that you do invest that one Soul Stone. Maybe you'll be really lucky and pull her. She's one of the rarest champions to actually pull in the game, but uh, tremendous. I think everything you said is kind of spot on, and she she probably cannot carry you as main DPS into the late game, but she can still be one of the DPS 
on the platform next to your comment or your beer or whomever it is. All right, let's head right back there. We'll go through this really quickly, guys. Uh, obviously, she's just getting an S. We thought about S+, plus, but I think that the only reason uh, Greed is getting is because the debuffs straight up for damage. She's not going to be on the level of those legendaries. We have her an A+, plus for Gear 2, because she can just mow down those waves. Absolutely. Uh, Gear 3, she can, up to a point, take care of, even though she's doing magic damage, she can, up to a point, still have enough damage to take care of those mobs coming in from the left or right coming in uh and then for arena great at aoe arena uh her cost is reasonable uh for campaign s plus obviously if you bought her you're probably gonna have her the whole game and she's just gonna be your number one champion for it for a very long time uh faction s plus she's amazing regardless but then again we got the dual faction membership uh and finally void rift i think she totally works really really serviceable aoe with some proper proper crowd control all right i'm obviously going to talk about imani i think we all saw this one coming let's place this girl <laughs> right here she is an s for us amani's the first six star on my account she is the center of my banner on my youtube page i think a lot of people know she's my absolute favorite i'm gonna try to talk really quickly about her because i could talk about her forever all you really need to know about amani is she is single target magic burst and she's so flipping good at it i love how synergistic her kit is uh We've got all this great damage here. Um, we're gonna get inc increased attack upon the on the first hit. So that's the very first hit of her deployment. Everything about her is you put her out and she's amazing for the first bit that she is out. Um, upon her deployment, you can get this all the way up to an increase in 20% attack, 25% crit rate, and 30% crit damage. You can get this to last a full 20 seconds. If you're gonna use her, you should skill her up. Uh, her Holy Fire, her ultimate, tremendously expensive. This goes down to 1200 cost, but it goes up to 1100 initial cost. Everything about Amani is about dropping her, using her right away, and then you're done with her. Uh, moving on to her awakenings, this is super important for Amani. Uh, you need her at Awaken 1, period. Otherwise, if you're going to leave her on the on the field at all after uh, the effect of her ultimate ends, she's going to enter a weakened state where she's worse. She like debuffs herself. However, Awaken 1, that goes away. So if you're going to use her at all, Awaken 1. However, Awaken 3, which is one of my big goals, hopefully I get a couple copies when I pull like 200 times for Hex this weekend, uh, minus 25 <laughs> seconds revival time, right? So that's 35 seconds. If you're running... Uh, like a Volca, right? This is like 27 seconds. So just just, just, just over 27 seconds. Uh, so basically, you put her down, you wait 27 seconds, you rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. She is a tactical nuke, guys. You're going to get basically 100% uptime on this if you use her properly. She's down for 20 seconds, she's up for 27. Rinse, repeat. She's so good. The damage is huge. I will say, not the highest attack when you look at it, but pretty darn good for an epic mage. I'll tell you that much. Uh, let's go back. Anything you want to add or did I cover it? I love Imani. <laughs> No, I, I think you did a great job. One thing that it does remind me of, though, is like uh, kind of like that, that just the, the straight up ultimate when you drop her, when you do have her skilled up, like that is something that a lot of people don't realize, but is really powerful. Yeah. The fact that you could just basically immediately alter. That is yeah. what you're really looking yeah. for. You're instantly getting the passive, so all the increases to attack, crit rate, and crit damage, and then instantly getting her ult. And she's really, she's not doing much without her ult, but with her ult, it's a bit of a delete button. It's pretty awesome. So she's just in the Infernal Faction. We said burst, and she's a tactical nuke. I cannot wait to get her A3 and start playing around with her. Uh, Gear Aid 1, I'm giving her a B plus. I know it's single target damage, but the damage is really, really huge. And she did carry me all the way to like stage 16, 17, her and Lightlock. Uh, she does fall off a cliff, so we're not giving any of her any higher because there's no AoE to speak of. But she she can just be killing people so fast, it basically feels like AoE. Uh, Gear Aid 2, she can totally nuke down the boss. She's like a mini Nocturne in that way. Uh, she She's not ideal, but you guys might have seen in my guide, she did kill the boss for me in Gear Aid 218. Uh, so I give her a C in gear raid three. Could you use her? Yes, in the middle to focus the boss. Uh, should you use her? Probably not. Guild boss, we're giving her an A plus. Uh, I don't know. I could hear. I could hear an S. The thing is, there's just such high quality at the very tippy top of Infernal. I think she's one notch below. But what you can also do if you get her awakened three is you just drop her just for the shields, get the full benefit, pick her up, and then drop her again. It'll be she'll be ready in time for the next shields. Pretty cool. Arena, she works pretty well for single target and sustain, but not the best. Campaign, she's amazing. She carried me through the whole thing. She was my main damage dealer. We're gonna give her an A plus. We're giving her an S in faction. She's really good, uh, specifically for the Infernal faction you can park her right in front of the navros boss that they have there the scarecrow scarecrow boss and she can just take the whole thing down that's what she does for me void rift serviceable but not really that great honestly i might even go s plus because i do think she's going to fall off a cliff in hard void rift when there's higher defense overall she's an a uh, part of my heart wanted to just give her triple s but alas <laughs> do you want to talk about our friend worse zealous 
Oh, uh, you know, I, I'm going to have to say Festivity did a great job of giving us uh, a few of these little titles for the characters. We have Jack of No <laughs> Trades, Worst Zealous, a Siren is accurately named. Um, although not everyone, you know, is going to have all these characters available to them. But are you going to be excited about a Siren? Maybe, you know, I think the biggest thing that you're really, really missing out of him is that he's not really doing much besides, you know, mm -hmm. that AOE damage. Like, he's just there for AOE damage. And, you know, you could do some a little bit of execution, um, but it's it's really just not that impressive. Like, if I'm going for someone who's just going to do straight up damage, I'm really hoping for some, like, damage and while he does do good damage it's not like extremely impressive or anything and i mean he's just a basic character he's just not that impressive i would say just through and through he's worth zealous like zealous has the same kit he just does ground damage aoe uh, so ground damage is bad against aerial units it's fine against ground units he does it it's fine there's no utility here there's no debuffs he doesn't even buff himself there's nothing going on at all, guys. He doesn't have high base attack. Uh, he has the same terrible five second zealous interval. It's terrible. I have a, I have him awakened five, and he doesn't even get anything good here. Increased damage by 10%, whatever, 5%, whatever, tw 25 rage. Do you know how much rage it costs for his ultimate, guys? Like, what are we talking about? 25 rage. We got to get 800 rage here. It's just not good. Minus two costs. He's already 25, so he only goes to 23. This is terrible. He's terrible. It drives me nuts. However, we're going to give him a C, as you're about to see right now, because he technically does damage, and there's so many, so many characters in this game that technically don't. Uh, let's go to the rubric here, folks. We're zealous. We're going to give him B and gear aid one, and they're all ground units. He technically does damage. If you want to six-star him, you absolutely should not, but he would work. Uh, he'll do more than your Voltus, I guess. Arena, technically he could work. Let's give him a C minus just so people know how I really feel. Uh, it is proper AoE. It's not multi-target. That's something. Campaign, he'd be serviceable. Why not? It is magic damage. Faction, he actually is kind of good. They're all ground units again. And this, the cursed faction does seem harder to get. I know that's anecdotal, but I've talked to a lot of people. They don't have that many epics, actually. Let's actually count it. They only have six epics. And some of these guys, as we've discussed, Greed, Iona, and Hollow, I, I'm empirically proving they have lower rates. So he might be, he was my only epic, he was my only non rare for a very long time. Uh, so you might be stuck with him just like I was. Uh, but yeah, he is whatever. He is a, it just, he's, to me, he's the definition of a C. There's nothing extra in his kit. There's nothing interesting at all. All right, shall we get this bad taste out of our mind, out of our mouths? Uh, I can see the, the, the rage there. When I look at your, you got the Zealous and the Osiris. So you're, you're actively just comparing the two. I mean, you're missing the deep, the vulnerability. I mean, that's like the main reason Zealous is like yeah. insane. Or like pretty Zealous, good, Zealous right? Zealous is like, like super relevant for like every reason Osiris isn't. Cause Zealous at least has a couple, I don't know. The thing with Osiris also is I pulled him six times. I don't even think I pulled another champion three times. I pulled Osiris oh six times. Goodness. I pulled six Osiris before my Morrigan. So if you guys don't think I, I paid the tax, he was the only cultist i ever pulled that wasn't rare um all right moving on let's talk about our s tier s s s tier champion do you want to talk about laurel or, sh or shall i uh well you know this is one that i've actually been convinced to build out so she's someone i've summoned quite a few copies of and initially i was like okay i'm not 100 sure kind of what her purpose is but as i'm starting to kind of accumulate a couple of different characters and dive deeper into the game she is kind of way better but in terms of what she's fulfilling i'm using like elowen for example and that's kind of like a similar role although she does it like exceptionally like yeah. better to buff up you know the rage generation and all that good stuff coming in and i've been really impressed with how she's able to just massively increase the ultimate regenerations and just give a bunch of damage increases across the board uh yeah. for your team very very impressive and it's not something that's like a uh, an intuitive thing like you don't look at this no. character and you're like what is she really doing you have to make sure she's doing her role and in specific scenarios to give you those ultimates regening and all this stuff in order for you to actually get the value out of laurel she's a little bit more tricky i'd say yeah she has so many things thrown at you in her kit so damage and then all of a sudden this three percent thing that's kind of confusing then this damage increase and i'm like is that for her is it or is it for her allies it actually is for her which stinks however she's got to be maybe the easiest to use champion she is the same idea as like a decimus guys all that matters she's an easy investment just bring her to five stars bring her to five stars of promotion you will unlock this full 
talent upon death, and that includes when you call her back. So when you take her off the battlefield and recall her to your team, upon death provides surrounding allies with a restoration of 50% of their rage cap. That is so nutty, guys. She is just, its it, honestly, she is broken. I wouldn't be surprised by a nerf. Uh, keep in mind, this is not all the allies in her actual range. It's all the allies adjacent to her but she just makes so many cheesy strats work. She is so nutty. Um, I mean, I actually haven't, I, I did use her for gear aid 119, but actually I was able to beat all the 18s without her and I did do 219 without her, which is maybe where she's most famous right now. But if you need any help, there is no shame in using a Laurel. Uh, I call her the Rage Mage for a reason. 50%, put her, just put her in a Rapidity set to make her cost less, run her with Volca to reduce the re redeployment cost. It's a beautiful thing. So we're going to give her an S there in Gear Aid 1, S+, plus because she's on the most late game teams. Everyone uses her, basically, uh, 20 plus for Gear Aid 2. Uh, Gear Aid 3, it still works. You can still spam the Rage Mage. You can always do it. Guild Boss, we gave her C+, because technically you could do it. Arena, I've seen some of the most frustrating teams ever doing it. I don't know if I'm going to bring myself to that yet, but I could totally see myself stooping that low one day. Campaign, obviously, why wouldn't you want the Rage Mage? Faction, Esotericist, Rage, God Tier. Voidrift, <laughs> S plus again, why wouldn't she be? I was so close to giving her an S plus. If you guys remember to my video with Ronaldo, uh, the one on his channel with the whole A5 epic tier list, he's saying what makes someone God Tier if they do something no one else does? That is what Laurel does. However, you can still beat all this content without her, and I think that's what keeps her from getting full S+. However, I think she's my number one S-rated champion. I don't know, is that is that crazy? Is that crazy of all these epic mages? Yeah. So when I've started to dive in and do some research on Laurel, because she's someone that's popped up on my radar very recently, because I've summoned a couple copies of her, and I wouldn't say that that's unreasonable. Like, yes, you have Anna. Okay, so the way I look at this is you have fair characters and then you have Laurel. That's kind of how I would describe yeah. it. Like, she's just not a fair character. It's not know? a like, thing. Like, these are straightforward. <laughs> she's like, if you guys have ever seen the movie Crank, when he gets stabbed in the heart with the adrenaline needle or whatever that was, she's like that to your team like four times a battle. She's crazy. Like, especially as a Comet user, as someone with Comet, and she's the same faction as him too, talk about a high cost and then all of a sudden she just keeps cutting it in half she's she's cheesy guys if you like your if you like your pizza with extra extra cheese laurel is the slice for you <laughs> um, all right on that note do you have raiden do you want to talk about raiden shall i Ooh, raiden so he is someone i do not have and i've been looking at uh for the recent recent times for the you know lord ability but mm -hmm. Honestly, this is someone that I haven't really dove into. One of the, the least familiar, I'd say. Okay. So I've, I'll, I've, I'll hand it over to you. I've used him on takeovers, so I can speak to him decently well. I will say a knock against Raiden. I'm going to go really fast now, guys. But Venoma, she's got like the supercharged version of the Lord skill, right? So she, he, Raiden gets minus 15% cost to allies of his faction. She gets 25. That's kind of marginal. But then she gets a whole other thing, an extra 30 rage upon deployment. That's what makes Venoma so cool on top of the cost. For Raiden, it's just the cost, right? Super, super basic. It's a one line of read, just a simple skill like Lunaria, but not nearly as powerful, right? Uh, that being said, pretty cool. And if you have someone like Comet, who's ex exceedingly expensive to use his, his uh, ultimate, and he's probably the best hero on your team, that makes Raiden super relevant. And half his ratings are just because if you have Eloin or Comet, he makes them a lot easier to use. I will say straight up AOE. Um, he can be pretty serviceable. This Thunder Devourer guys actually is pretty solid as long as he's in a situation where he gets kills. So that's really gonna just be like the XP and gold raids, gold raids, but most importantly, gear raid one. However, the damage isn't that high. You can get this up to five stacks. And then I wanna also highlight uh, da, 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 at his A3, you get an extra 3% damage. Uh, that's pretty significant, right? So you're gonna get, uh, whatchamacallit, you're gonna get six for each stack. So you get an extra 30% damage. That that definitely is something uh it's relevant however i'll just show you his base attack here guys he is suffering from what all epic mages seem to suffer from only 3200 attack i mean that is that is that is rough uh let's head into the thing not too much to talk about he is an aoe mage and aoe mages are rare so for that we'll give him some decent ratings guys uh raiden what are your ratings the thunderous aoe lord well we're giving him an s for gear aid one because he is serviceable i have used him on a takeover 419 he can put out damage uh but he's mostly getting that s because it's very likely your best dps is comet and he's gonna be the difference between your comet being good enough for a stage and maybe not being good enough for a stage uh gear aid two we'll give him a b plus 
100% because of Comet and Elowin, I would say. Elowin's probably the best healer for this stage after Sadie, uh, and Comet is probably the best nuker besides Vierna uh, for those big mobs, uh, so we'll certainly take that. Gear 3, I use Comet, uh, and I used him to beat 18. I think a lot of people do that. He's not necessary, so he gets a lower rating, but the fact that you might use him and you easily could use an Elowin, I'm going to give him a C. B plus Arena. 100% just because you need lowered cost on Comet. <laughs> we'll give him an S in campaign. I'm in proper damage, and he's got a lot of mobs he can kill, so we can really get those full stacks. Uh, so there's something where he's actually his own kit's helping. Uh, S+, plus, he's the Lord of the Faction. Void Rift, Comet, and Elowin. There you go. We gave him an A. <laughs> uh, there is Raiden with the A. Uh, probably going to put him at the back there, a bit above Navros, but we'll put him right there. Uh, let's move it right along, and let's talk about Azoth. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm probably going to talk about him too because I was just playing with him in the test server this morning. Uh, Azoth. Hit me with it. This guy's Az exciting. Azoth is pretty exciting, guys. I don't want to give it all away because I've got a big showcase guide coming out on him. However, I just want to highlight the key thing about him, which are his his ultimate and then combined with his awakening. So if I ever find this guy, here's our here's our horny guy. Uh, his ultimate here, when activated, increases crit rate by crit damage by 80% and crit rate by 20%. Crit rate will increase by 5% for 20 seconds uh, per second or until he crits 10 times. So you might think, all right, until he crits 10 times, it's only 50%. We're not going to be able to max it out. Well, let me tell you, if you get him awakened one, excuse me, awakened three, uh, there's no longer a limit on the number of crits. So then you're saying, all right, but it only lasts 20 seconds. Well, if you can get this on awakened one, he's recovering 10% rage for every three crit, hit, crit hits landed. As long as you build him with any decent amount of crit, it doesn't have to be that high, even 50%. Once the ult's up, that will really ramp up. And he's going to basically be charging his ult right, right, right back up. And you can do some crazy stuff. Stuff. I don't want to give too much away, but he's very nasty in the clan boss, uh, guild boss. He is infernal. He is, uh, he's pretty cool. I will say besides that, uh, he's really just a single target spammer guy. He doesn't have some of the extra special things and synergistic things that someone like Amani has. So he's going to get some ticks for that, but he puts out decent damage. Anything, not, anything else to add? I think that basically covers it. No, I mean, uh, he also offers burning, which is kind of cool. And, of you course, know, yeah, sorry, a... sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Let me play a good that. chunk of initial damage coming out from the burning effect, which actually is relevant, especially if you do start to get some of those awakens in. Uh, for example, the um, the awaken five. If you're lucky enough to get awaken five, that is exceptionally powerful for some additional True. AOE damage. So, yeah, burning's nice as well. Just a, a ton of crit damage coming out from this Absolutely. guy. Absolutely, and burning guys is magic damage, right? So good for the content he'd already be good at uh thanks for pointing that out. i totally forgot uh and dot damage as well is gonna be great in the in the guild boss and burning stacks so lots of great things for azoth so gear raid one uh i'm giving him a c plus here he is single target but exactly exactly like veil just pointed out if you're able to get him a5 aoe burning is crazy for putting out some great man magic damage he can be relevant however that's pretty niche uh, gear A2, he could newt down the boss with a good build. You'd probably need him at least A1, uh, ideally A3. Um, but you can really keep that ult going and going and going. He can, you can get a lot of rage. Gear A3, no way you're going to use him. Guild boss, A+. I thought about S, but I think that needs to be reserved for the big, big hitters. But I'm telling you guys, this is big, big damage. Uh, C- minus for Arena. He puts out the burning. Uh, he's got single target, so he could work for single target, could work for sustained. I don't think the best choice in the world, but it could happen. Uh, campaign, fine. Single target, it's magic damage. AoE burning could be cool if you get him all the way skilled up. Uh, or awakened up, I should say. Faction, I think he's fine. Uh, he's infernal. Uh, there's a lot of good hitters there, but he's also a good single target hitter. All in all, we're giving him a B-. minus. So let's place this guy. And do you, did you have Cellcath? I actually am lucky enough not to have Cellcath. I, you know, I have quite a few epics and the cell cap is not one of them. This guy is, oh, I want him to be good. Okay, so the, the, the only reason I want him to be good is because for those of you that play Star Wars games, there's a race in the old Night Shield Republic games on the cell cap. And like, that is what it reminds me of every time. And he, he's just bad. I don't know what to say. Like, I mean, this guy is like the, you know, the thing that I was really interested in him for was the ultimate. You know, the AOE attack speed increase. I was like, wow, you know, maybe, maybe we could get something going there, but it is super low. It's it's just super. not enough to really like see much value out of him. And he just he doesn't do any damage really. No. So I just, 
not good. <laughs> yeah, guys, even if you skill this up, it only goes up to 70. And if you guys watch any of my stuff, you know I love attack speed, but 70 is like with higher level builds, might not, it's only gonna get you probably like 0.2 seconds in reduction in attack interval. That's nothing. And if that's the only thing he's got going, Honestly, the most interesting thing is I didn't know there was a whole race called Selkath, but he totally looks, he just looks like he'd be in the cantina from the Star Wars movies, right? Yep. So he's very, yeah. very cool yep. looking, but he is stinky, stinky. He's got a little bounce attack. The damage is really bad. I'll show you the, the base stats. Decently high attack, I will say, uh, but in general, these epic mages just have pretty bad attack. Um, I'm pretty comfortable giving him the terrible ratings we're about to give him. <laughs> so, Selkath. You gotta put him above the Zine, though. Uh, he, I, he, can't, I can't put him below the Zine. He, he will be, we, we can, I can manage. If you, if you guys see, we did give Nazim a D minus, the rare D minus. I don't think Selkath, the poop fish face, deserves a D minus. But in Gear Aid 1, he is usable, but terrible. We give him a D. Uh, I guess the attack speed could help if you're desperate, but like, could you just get better here? I don't know. It just doesn't seem worth wasting a D point on that. No way, no way, no way. Got to get all the way to campaign. I actually, you know what? I could see him with a C here, not a C minus. I could see him being serviceable. If you were really early on, I could see him helping you a bit. Uh, that is high base attack, at least. Faction, Esotericists are pretty, yeah, it's pretty sparse, so we'll give him a C, but any other faction, he probably would get like a rare D rating in uh, in faction, which is which is rare. We're going to give him a D there, uh, so he can go right here, but we will be sure to place Nazim behind him upon your request. Three left, guys. Stick with us. Uh, Pyros. Do you have Pyros? So this is one I'm uh, I'm actually not super familiar with, yet I want Ooh. him super badly. So I, I've been reading through his ultimate. I've read through his ultimate several, several times. Um, because there is so much text here. Yes. And with the passive, uh, I, I'm looking at some insane, as at the bottom, as you can see there, where it says gains the focus fire yeah, effect. Yeah. That's exactly what this idea really is, is you're focus firing down the wood target. But then at the end of it, you're doing big AOE damage, which was actually really impressive. So mm -hmm. I haven't seen um, him be bad at any point. I have not used him personally, and I'm really excited to dive in and try him out because he offers some really powerful aspects with his Lord, as well as with that passive. Uh, the ultimate's very interesting to me though. Absolutely. So guys, me and Ivy ranked him as our number two Epic Lord. If you missed that video, go check it out. Uh, but we went into a detail there, so I'm just gonna give you the really short version. It's basically everything Veiled was just talking about. He is amazing for channeling him and his faction allies to do single target damage. This focus fire, it doesn't count like your Dolores or your uh, Autumn or something, your healers, but any other Infernal team, build an Infernal team around him, the damage is exceptional. Uh, on top of that, one of the best vulnerabilities in the game um, he's going to get it all the way up to 20%. This is actually better than what Twin Fiend is able to do. Twin Fiend doesn't get vulnerability until he's awakened level 1. So good luck getting an awakened level 1 legendary lord. <laughs> this guy is nuts. He is so, so good. Amazing lord skill as well with the penetration increase. Um, not too much to say about Pyrus. He's like, he's like a single target god. He is the dirty uncle for a reason, guys. Uh, trust us. He's probably my most wanted champion right now. Him or Maul, I would say. Uh... Okay, so let's head back to our rubric here. Uh, let's scroll to the left. So Pyros, single target slayer. Uh, Infernal is the best faction in the game for guild boss, and he is basically the best leader you're gonna have for it until you get some busted twin fiends. So good luck with that. Uh, B minus for gear aid one. He does have AOE on his on his ultimate, uh, and he can help. Uh, some of your other great infernal characters actually infernal happens to be a weak faction for gear aid one but tons of magic damage so for that alone we'll give him the b minus gear aid two uh you could totally be using a cetrum you could totally be using a zila two uh that alone will give him the a minus uh and then he could put out a little aoe on the mobs but probably would not be a good choice for that at all gear aid three actually gonna give him an a plus you might be surprised but cetrum zila two maybe two of the best heroes in the whole game for that he's their lord s plus uh, a plus s plus for guild boss not much to say he is the guild boss god infernal is the guild boss faction uh arena very strong again just for being the lord of your zila two i mean the fact is it's the same thing like with raiden and comet right it's zila two is that good she's she's that super s tier uh <sighs> it, you're dreaming of having her oh you have her right uh, yeah, oh. I, having a zilla tier, you know i have the piece <sighs> but not the lord you know i well, mean <laughs> I, guys, if you missed it yesterday, I'm pretty sure within the week, within within the next seven to ten days, we are going to get our next uh, fusion, and it can only really be Pyros, Raiden, or Aeon. So 
Fingers crossed it's Pyrus for you and for me. Uh, S plus we're gonna give him for faction. Obviously he's the Lord. And then A for Void Rift again, cause like, look at Veiled and his Zilla too, right? Wouldn't he love that Lord? There you go. We're giving him an S. Okay, Continue. get this. I have an Awakened 2 Zilla too. <laughs> so, and you like, missed your I, 10X, right? Uh, no, yeah, I missed the 10X. I, uh, so of the legendaries I've subbed, I, I like went like Zilla 2 into, um, I forgot who else my second one. I think it was Comet. And then I went Zilla 2, Zilla 2. Like that was my first four legendaries in the game. And I was just sitting there like, Z oh so you're like, you're like, I don't know why people say this game's hard. This game's easy. <laughs> it's an easy game. You when you start with Zilla 2, I mean, the whole game is just, a, it's just a totally different game. And Pyros is just the cherry on top. Please, he is just please roast this fool for having an A2 Zilla 2. And he didn't, even, he didn't even join the game during the 10X for her. That is crazy. You're crazy. Oh my gosh. Uh, that is blessed. Ugh. All right, let's wrap up. This last bit should be pretty easy, folks. Uh, we got two left. They're both from the Esotericists, and uh, they're both not that good. So we'll talk about... How about I talk about an assault, you talk about I, because I have a couple things to say about an assault, and <laughs> I assume I, you're not the biggest we'll fan. We'll go for it. <laughs> assault has... Uh, same way Pyros had a pretty confusing read, and Assault has an equally confusing read here when you try to wrap your head around how the heck these magic files work. He can do a bit of burning. He can do a bit of poison. It really doesn't make sense. Uh, they spread out. You just watch him, and he's not doing anything. He's just making these vials. Uh, he's terrible. He's really unusable in almost every inch of content. I will say, shout out to Jonk. Shout out to the hashtag Ein Gang. He loves Nassault, mostly as a meme. However, he's been able to get Nassault up to like 20 million damage uh, on the guild boss. And it takes a lot of RNG, guys. But if you look at, uh, where is it, the talent, he can get up to just a straight up 40% increase on damage if the vials line up well during the shield, break the shield, and then they go off he can do damage so that alone keeps him from being a total poo poo tier but that's a lot of ifs ands and all abouts <laughs> he's a very complicated guy we don't need to spend much breath talking about him you're gonna see a lot of dashes here guys he's barely usable like because he just he just doesn't do anything he just sits around making his little vials no way gear aid one no way gear, gear raid two no way no way guild boss or gear aid three uh excuse me no way gear three guild boss will give him a b because like i said he can put up that big number we're not going to give him higher though because it's impossibly hard to make that all work uh, if you found a way to do it reliably, let us know, guys, but I certainly don't know of it. Arena, no. Campaign, no. Faction, he's Esotericist, and he's better than Cellcath, so he's going to get an S uh, C+. Plus. Uh, no way for it. If you guys use him in Void Rift, you let me know. That'd be nuts. We're going to give him a D plus uh, because I I wanted, he needs some extra bonus because he can be used in Guild Boss. And I, Guild Boss, I think, is the most important content. That being said, he's hard to use and that's the only thing he can do. Uh, so we're going to give him a nice D plus, which puts him at the top of the worst line we got. Let's move I to the back because we got to figure out where to place her now. Do you want to chat about I quickly? Yeah, so I is, uh, I would say, probably the most unique character character in the entire epic mage faction she's yeah. very very interesting uh she's gonna be summoning these seeds that turn into bombs and then can enhance that do damage and freeze ignore the, any damage part of this she's really here just to inflict the various different cc's that she has access to um in terms of like freezing for a certain amount of time into like extra time it's interesting it's very niche, I'd say. Uh, you can get some use out of her. Um, I've tried to use her in like Gear Raid 1. I was not super impressed, especially when you have a free Mari access to. Like, why would you ever use I, in my opinion? Um, but, you know, you could use her like I've tried her in factions. She's not terrible. I found her to be pretty good, honestly, in the earlier stages. But, you know, kind of a very niche character and, you know, don't really have much options in the game to use her, I'd say. Yeah, I will say the one interesting with I is whatever, whenever it was two or three weeks ago, we had the Esotericist faction trial added, and it's like she was built for it because all the niche things she's good at, this crazy large range and these really weird crystal bombs actually work all of a sudden. So shout out to I for finding a home. Uh, but yeah, I think you covered it. I think you nailed it, Veiled. Um, let's pop our sheet back open and wrap this bad boy up. So for I, a lot of unusables, guys, because you'd be kind of crazy to use her. I thought of giving her a decent rating for Gear Aid 1, uh, and I actually do want to quickly point out, I won't go back to the gallery, she's got decent base attack, it's like 3,500 plus, uh, and if you can get her Awaken 1, she's going to do 50% increased damage on those bomb explosions, but to my testing so far, the damage isn't really worth it, and by using her, guys, you need to think about this, you might get some freezes, but every crystal takes up a spot where you can't place a melee 
melee unit. That's a lot of RNG and a lot of frustration. So basically by using her, you're kind of not allowing yourself to place melee units. And if you're in a desperate enough position that you need to use her, you probably need to be using your melee units. So I think she's just cannot be used there. Obviously, gear A2 no, gear A3, obviously no, they're all airborne. Uh, guild boss, you'd be crazy. <laughs> uh, arena, ah, it takes forever to get those things out. Uh, campaign, she could totally work because those bites tend to be a lot longer. But then, like we said, I'm giving her an S plus. Like a lot of people that are hurting for esotericis, especially if you don't have like a big ringer like a uh, comet or you haven't built out your uh, Navros, I mean, she does proper work. Have you tried her out yet, by the way, in the Esotericist faction trial? So I have, and uh, I, I'm on the earlier stages, so mm, I haven't okay. really dove into like the deeper stages. And she's not like fully built out. I have her like five star right now, which is reasonable. So I'm yeah. not too I'm not too disappointed, but I'm not pushing very far. So I haven't really seen like okay, she's really providing yeah. work because my whole team doesn't really provide work. Yeah. So. <laughs> But, but even that, guys, like she can she can solo like the first one or two stages, and that's something, right? Because you might already just be it like, I, I only have Selkat, you know, like at least she does something. Uh, so we will give her the S plus there, uh, which actually earns her, if I'm not mistaken, that is going to earn her a nice C minus, which is a passing grade. So congratulations, I. We will wrap it up there. You get the back of the line. Let's make sure these guys look pretty in order. I think I probably now. Nah, I think I think this feels good. Does this feel good? Uh, maybe Mar Mar here. ahead I, of Amani. Maybe this feels pretty good. To me. I yeah, I would say pretty pretty solid. A Azov kind of being the splitting factor to, between like okay, you feels have characters good, right? that you actively <laughs> yeah. want to use like greed, <laughs> Mari. Like okay, I'm gonna choose those characters to use in those specific yeah. pieces of content, and Azoth's like. Yeah, I would use them in some specific yeah, scenarios. I think there's and an I'd argument. I think there's an argument to also put Navros more at like the B plus and A is also at the B minus. I am gonna give him the bunt because I do really like him. Uh, but it, it does really seem like Raiden <laughs> up. Like you're gonna use them and and so lay down. You're probably not. So guys, thank you so much. Another long one, but we expected this 16. So we've put the fighters behind us. We put the mages behind us. The, the marksmen were easy. It was only eight. Thank you for. Uh, going through the trenches with me on this one veiled uh, anything else you want to add before we sign off uh i'm i'm disappointed we we have to do the uh lit well i'll have to come back for the legendary fighters list you know why because i have arrogance too oh so, my god uh, <laughs> i actually so, have arrogance so, I, i'm a dirty free to play with arrogance so we'll have we'll have to do it once we finally move on to legendaries uh but as you know as the free to play guy we have to start with our epics thank you so much for joining us veiled guys i will uh, have already had his stuff flashing across the screen but be sure top comment pinned i will have a link to his channel in the description i'll have a link to his channel uh you can tell he's a knowledgeable guy and he's got a good passion for these games so thank you guys so much for watching if you like the video like it if you want to comment and yell at us do that share it share it with your mother i'll see you in the next one Fast Didius.